server operators can scale back that effect. I've seen a few videos from people who've modded and changed the game to like 50% OCI or ICO 33%, 25%. And those versions yeah, do look just, a lot better. And if yeah, they give people like... the ability to do that, then that might be the best way of, of solving this entire situation. I would argue against... I understand where you're coming from with that, but I would argue against that. It's because, I, you know, if... That would be a bit confusing for new players, and yeah, I admittedly I disagree on the server operators being able to modify it because it would feel very weird. There needs to be like, um, there needs to be a linear um thing to it. There can't just be a bunch of different servers with a bunch of different settings. That would get out of hand real quick. Yeah, I mean, OWI has already said in the modding Discord that they are making it available to modders to adjust these uh, aspects the suppression the weapon sway everything else in the sdk because i don't know why it wouldn't be possible to have an owi official mod that we can run just like middle eastern escalation or galactic contention and be like hey this is you know no ico server and people that want to play non-ico servers can play that modded server i don't see why that would be an issue at all the reason Me they don't want to do that is because the player base isn't big enough to support two separate branches. At least that's, I think, what they're thinking. I don't know if that's true or not. Well, I mean, it would be a really good representation as to what the player base wants. You know, if everybody's only playing on those modded servers and the other servers stay empty or, you know, the servers aren't popping as easy, then they know, hey, nobody really actually wants this. And if it's not the case, then at least we have one server we can play on where we like it. Yeah, I agree, and I, I hope they do do that. I'm just trying to see it from their perspective. But yes, Real, I'm not sure they actually want to know what people want at this point. Real so, quick. Um, uh, random yeah. thing, I just... Oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, sorry, it's because Ar Arch just joined. I just wanted to have him introduce himself real quick, explain his background, you know, with the squad, how many hours, and if he's pro or anti-ICO, just so we all get to know each other surface level real quick. All right, um, so I played it for about 2,300 hours of playing the Oceanic servers. Um, um, I'm kind of neutral. I actually like on ICO, I, I think I like the direction it's going, but the means that it's used to arrive at its end is heavy-handed and overturned. So like... I think they should probably change, like reduce the effects by about half on, and as a general rule of thumb, like um, my main issue with the game right now, the ICO is that I think like ADSing and looking down sites is like 70, 80% of the game, like it's the bread and butter of the game. You look at a lodgy a vehicle, an infantry, whatever, looking at aha, people spawning there, you're always looking down your gun sights. And so when you break such a fundamental aspect of the game, um, <laughs> you kind of destroy the game in a sense. Like, so what I mean is you can't hold your gun like uh, steadily so i feel the game's become unfun because it's affected such a core aspect of the game of just being able to have the agency of look down your weapon in time and adequately be able to hit your targets and you can't really do that anymore because of how long it takes and how badly tuned it is and it's actually funny it's also indirectly buffed um vehicles because it's the the poor gun, you know, changes has also affected the AT weapons. So now it's very hard to steady your AT weapon to hit vehicles. So now the vehicles are just having like a fucking, I don't know, parade Field, no. running around because it feels like you can only reliably hit something within 50 meters. It's that shake like unsteady. Even when you're holding the shift button for steady aim, you never really like sit still for for like a one tap like an accurate shot and that is so yeah when the, most of your bread and butter gameplay is about hitting your shots 
and you can't hit your shots anymore. It, the, I only played like four or five hours of the ICO and I'm like, okay, I, I, I've seen enough and I'm just going to wait it out for the next patches until they fix it because it's quite unfun, the level of the severity of the changes that they've made. Yeah, that's my take. Awesome. Thank you, Ark. Looks like the chat, just catching up on chat to see if anybody had any questions, but it looks like they're responding to each other. Um, let's see. Uh, so as kind of a response to the conversation that's going on in chat a little bit, um, one big thing that a lot of people say is like, well, if y'all had such a big problem with this, why didn't you play the play test and put your feedback in? And I actually did. Yeah, yeah so I think so most of us so, did. So I played every single play test and I filled out the response form for every single play test. The problem is, and I've tried to, I've tried to put this into words over text, like in, in some of the channels and stuff in the discord, it's kind of hard to do that. Um, the problem with the way that they went about the play tests and the feedback is typically like, even if they tune down something by less than 1% or this or that, between play test to play test, there were so many different changes. It was kind of hard to tell like what each individual change was. And then on top of that, it was extremely hard to give constructive feedback because every single feedback form was different. They didn't keep the <laughs> feedback forms consistent. So any feedback that they did get was very wildly skewed because we weren't able to tell exactly what they changed and what we liked about the changes because so many different changes were made. And then the feedback forms varied so much between each play test that it, it was impossible for them to look at the feedback forms, play test to play test and figure out what like if what they did was received well or not, because it was just completely different. So we all did. We played all of the play tests. At least I did, and a lot of the people that I know did. I know. I and... know a lot of people just only played the first one and then kind of just already had enough from the first play test. Go on, though. Uh, Ray Cave. Uh, says not true comp players will become good at it and smash the casual players again uh, this is already happening man like the comp players that i play with we're still going four to one five to one six to one kd and now what i'm seeing is the newer players are like throwing a lot more donuts up a lot more zeros in a game like we're already doing that it's not even a thing that will happen but those but those kills that we're getting are are like far less satisfying i will say yeah they're just painful, like i just don't yeah. even enjoy killing or hitting frags it's there's just it's just tiresome like i'm just tired <laughs> yeah it doesn't feel like what you're doing is reflecting of your kill like if you if you deserve that because it's just wobbling fucking everywhere <laughs> yeah, i'm trying to play marksman i, I if I, if by chance someone was running and i took a shot at them and like say they drop behind cover or something i would never be able to know if i hit them or not because they either maybe just dropped to the ground maybe they kept running maybe i did actually hit them i don't know because i can't see anything because as soon as i fire it's black screen oh yeah real quick here justice j just joined us in the voice call here justice welcome if you want to just introduce yourself real quick what's your squad background pro slash anti ico uh I'm in the middle, but probably more leaning toward the anti side. Uh, over 3,500 hours, mostly squad leading. And I've run a couple communities in the past. But... Great to have you here. All right, Swooper, take it away. Um, I don't remember what I was going to say if I was saying something. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, let's let's talk about mods for a second because I've been thinking about that since you guys brought it up. Yep. Um, I do think something like a hardcore mode, like you had in Battlefield, would be a good thing. But it's got to come from OWI because having talked to some folks that have worked on mods for Squad in the past, um, the support isn't there. And when OWI pushes an update, it often breaks the mods, so you're not going to have a consistent playable mod. It's got to be part of the game. You know, I know there's somebody right now who's working on a a mod that's going to revert a lot of the ICO changes, but I'm not optimistic about it lasting just because they're going to push another update and it's not going to work for two weeks and people are going to move on again. 
Yeah, there was one guy, one German guy, I think, who basically did pretty much all the comp mods. So where there were different layers, um, that that old map that they got rid of, um, and some like gameplay changes. Light. What? And basically, he um, I don't remember which one it was. I think maybe Squad Master or something. But it was basically a mod that everyone used. And it changed rally timers as well, what was based on the individual and not like the permanent minute countdown. And he, at some point, essentially just gave up with a lot of like the layers and the different spawn mechanics just because every update was breaking it. I think one of the big ones was just the, I mean, I think the new Unreal Engine. But every update essentially breaks mods. There were a lot of like pre release mods that were really good. Like, I actually kind of enjoyed the zombie one. But that, a lot of that, like, aside from, like, um, I guess the Star Wars one, and maybe, like, some of the, the more tactical stuff has... Yeah, plus they depreciate the most of the mods. I believe they now allow some mods in the main server browser, but... Because they insist on having such a tight control over server operations um, and basically make anybody who doesn't want to run the server, they, they want you to um, a second-class citizen that most people never see on the server list. Uh, mods are not going to attract the same... They won't have the same organic uptake as the main game does because people won't know about it if they're new players. Yeah. I remember the old Steel Division... Mod being very controversial, I personally I loved it. Um, I really did with the a lot of content, not just like new factions. It had new things, attack helicopters. You know that's all um, very uh, debate, controversial metal in of itself. But it added a lot of different stuff that wasn't just like oh so here's a new marksman no this is a entirely new thing this is a scout chopper we don't have scout choppers well now we do and they're adding that much stuff that i really appreciated that mod um and i think it did get fairly well popped in a lot of places but it got to the point that the mod itself even just um with i don't remember how many developers it had but it definitely had a very strong developer base um, ended up just quitting squad and they're actually working on their own game now in of itself which is interesting i just Real remember it was amazing yeah I, I just remembered actually just kind of a thought a uh, loose thought if you know if squad just really sticks to this a lot of us could maybe move to steel division if that um game ends up becoming good or like you know ends up the similar kind of game old squad was Kind of a thought there. I'm not too sure. If it turns out to be good, I'm there for sure. Yeah, yeah. I feel like st <laughs> um, Steel Division has the potential. If it manages to get something going and Squad really and truly does just kick the can um, and screw it, everything up with this update, yeah, there's, I'd say there's actually a fair chance people will just straight up move to Steel Division, whatever the a, um, game will become. It was originally a mod for Squad, but the developers kind of got sick of the lack of modding support and the uh, updates, so they started developing their own game in of itself. Steel Division added game. stuff like thermals to tanks, right-click coax, I believe, was another thing, uh, heavy transport choppers like the CH-47, light scout choppers um, like the MH-6 Little Bird, uh, attack helicopters like, you know, a K-52, Apaches. It added a lot of stuff for both vehicles and infantry, which personally I really appreciated. And yeah, apparently they're working on making their own game now. Oh yeah, this is the same one they were showcasing with the night vision and all of that. Yeah, yeah, that. I remember like somebody earlier. Was, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Then. I was just mentioning about the it, the thing with Steel Division was though it was kind of more Steel Division was specifically. Um, it was kind of um instead of having typical soldiers it was more like more like um the factions were all um special forces soldiers they weren't regular 
infantry. Like NEE sort of. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's an, actually that's another mod that hasn't been updated forever because of the lack of modding support and the even more rapid updates constantly breaking the mod, as I believe. But uh, yeah, Civil Division was more fo- had it just had a lot more interesting stuff, which I understand if a lot of squad players don't appreciate. But just personally, I, I really liked it, even if it was uh, you know um, more spec ops type thing than typical infantry. Uh, I mean, one of the best moments I've ever had on this game was on Steel Division. It was me and a group of uh, pretty close buddies. We were inside of a tunnel on Mestia, the train tunnel, but it was a nighttime map. So it was NVGs only, right? And uh, we were in the tunnels down there. And, uh, you know, the whole vibe came off as almost like a, a as strong as a Call of Duty campaign. You know, like, it really put you in the moment. And uh, we were able to, like, clear out the tunnel and everything with the lasers and the RR lasers and the uh, the NVGs. And, yeah, I mean, that that mod was very special. Um, and uh, the frequency of updates from OWI, it, it, it's crazy that mods like Galactic Contention and that team behind um, that mod, which is a pretty sizable portion of the player base. You know, like, a lot of people bought the game just to play Galactic Contention. Uh it, the frequency that they push out just kind of like menial updates that require those guys to, you know, sift through a lot of stuff in order to figure out what they broke is, uh, it's commendable that, uh, guys like the guys from Galactic Contention were able to keep up because the guys from Steel Division admittedly just weren't. Yeah. And also, just quick thing, Shoxy, you weren't getting, this isn't Battlefield, you weren't, even as a very experienced pilot myself, I wasn't going. 120 and zero. This isn't Battlefield that we're talking about. Usually I'd get 20 to 30 kills, which is about what you'd expect from a tank that is already in the game. Yeah, if you're getting 120 to zero, I just have to say, if you're getting 120 to zero, Jeez. you must have had the most brain dead people you were versing because I really had to keep my wits about me. That's another thing I know is mod is usually, well, as an obligatory, mods usually attract more skilled players. I think the thing more about the Steel Division stuff is like, they if they add decide to add more Hilo stuff, there is no real aside from um, I'd say maybe like the BMP and the Bradley and maybe the AA guns. There's no real infantry based AA system, which was why yeah, in Steel Division the Hilos were really annoying because you couldn't do anything. Yeah, that was mainly like they did attempt to add man pads and stuff, but thanks to squad spaghetti code, they pretty sure they were very buggy. Real quick here, I wanted to touch back on Shoxy's question here. The developers added the BS gunplay to increase the length of firefights. How would you try to do without the new gunplay? Uh, what does he mean what by is, that exactly? Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, Increase I'll, I'll take a shot. Length without I'll take a the shot features. How would you increase the time of firefights without affecting the gunplay in the way it is currently? Um, what gunplay? <laughs> it, it seems like it's a spam fest. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> yeah, Shoxy, if you can provide well, some some clarity. On yeah, that. I'd like a more detailed explanation. I, I please. under I understand the question. That's that's what a lot of like the developers, the patch notes, and a lot of the pro ICO guys are saying is like, yeah, the gunplay's not realistic, but the intent was to increase the firefight time so that firefights weren't over in 15 seconds. So the question being, how would you lengthen firefights without the ICO? I don't have I an answer I'm... for that, but my what I would say is... Why do we want to lengthen the firefights? Uh, what was wrong with the length of the firefights before? Here's the other, here's the other yeah, thing. I do the, tend reason to agree with that. the reason it's lengthened is there's two systems now. There's, there's three systems, really. There's stamina, there's suppression, and there's stability. You have three systems that you have to overcome to get an accurate shot, whereas before you just had one, which was suppression and, I guess, two, stamina and suppression. Yeah, it's a question of values. First of all, do we want to make firefights longer? Is that actually a virtue? And second, I think there's some confusion in terms. I think the ICO Pro people are, are saying, when they say firefight, they mean an individual gunfight between two players. 
or two groups of players. Yeah. Where whereas when we hear firefight, we think about two forces Tony. shooting at each other. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I just have to completely disagree with the idea that gunfights were short in previous in the previous version of Squad. Yeah, so I, I I I mean I I, I would say that the majority of gunfights that I'm in last at least five to ten minutes trying to take a point, unless it's a com un unless the other team's completely inept and you're able to just kind of roll in. But uh, I guess yeah, I guess we, that's kind of the other question, right? Is like uh, wh where where's where are some of these complaints coming from? And I guess I'm. I'm a little bit lost about that because, like, the whole I mean, the conversation that we're having earlier about the lone wolf being a huge issue and, and, and wiping full teams and you know, gunfights only lasting five seconds and people want it to last 30 minutes. It's just, I just, I just feel like it's completely over exaggerated in terms of the lack of immersion. I don't know, I, I'm confused by that because I'm every, every good gunfight I've been in is, is. Great, and it feels like plenty it's long. Actually, a, t a topic that we've kind of also hampered on in the past, mentioning regarding um, gunfights of um, and regarding the length of gunfights, maybe that has something to do with the fact that these people that want more length in gunfights, they are going up against comp players that know how the game works, that know how to shoot well. Versus there, and so they're just getting wiped because of it, and they're not liking the, that. To to add on to what you just said, like people don't realize, like the person with two hundred hours in the game versus the person with four thousand hours in the game. Like the person with four thousand hours in the game, they know these maps, they know the angles, they know where to look, they know where to like watch out from, they know what pathing to take and not to take. Like it, it's not. And I would also, I, I still say that the, the lone wolf taking out entire squads by himself with the very small, with a very small exception, is a myth. It didn't happen. What people were seeing and what they're thinking is lone wolf run and gun gameplay is a squad of five players that's not stacked up on one wall. Like, trading is what it was it was you know i go down i tell my guy that's 30 meters to my left where i went down from and he gets the trade and that's what people are thinking is you know the lone wolves but i would also say that that is teamwork that is coordination you know i think oh the, oh, oh sorry the intention was to make the game more strategic and they thought they need to make it slow down. What I mean by strategic is that, I guess, yeah, the movements, uh, yeah, like some guy in this chat said, deliberate. Whereas I think in pre-6, what was happening is kind of like a Zerg rush. Like what brings to my mind is like Mutaha, where, you know, both sides on the other side of the map and you kind of rush to mosque. And whoever kind of like Zerg rushes the positions inside the buildings and the advantageous places, the flanks, gets like a much easier time. Um, but I think the, and maybe the, they like nerf the agency to be useful with your gun. And then that way they drone out the ability to make pushes effectively. But I think the better way to have done it is something I noticed in a mod I played. Um, there was this mod, it was a hardcore mod, and you couldn't climb over walls. And it immediately had an effect of uh, this strategic um, change, which I think they were trying to achieve, which is Middle you couldn't East jump over yeah. walls. And if you look at these maps, sorry, it's not Mutaha, um, Fallujah, Fallujah. Um, there's all these walls in Fallujah and you just jump from one uh, wall to the other and then you implant yourself in these little cubby hidey holes and you can't really move in the city without like kind of uh, clearing each little cubby hole in the, that fucking city. 
and um it becomes an absolute nuisance where um there isn't much uh yeah it's it's very hard to do to clear them once they're entrenched in those areas because they're so maneuverable in terms of just jumping over walls and when when in that hardcore mod when that was taken out i noticed i started making more deliberate movements like i'll be like okay i need to sit here for a bit longer this is advantageous push it took me a while to get here because i can't jump over walls anymore and it may gain the give the player more thoughtful approach to where you would go and stuff um i think that's a better way of going about things than this kind of heavy-handed approach they've done by just like nerfing the gunplay outright to make fights drawn out because you can hardly hit each other i think yeah. i think a lot of that is honestly you're fighting in close quarters you should you do people do jump over walls and i mean sure it's it's easy but the only way to make something like Fallujah, for example it's it's expected that there's someone in every cubby hole hiding somewhere and i what like if you don't want people hopping over walls what they're going to have to do is add destructibility which uh, will never happen because it's can't even fix it no, that you can know. drive through a through a fence i don't agree i think it's just incredible how far you could kind of get ahead by zerg rushing and i think that was one of the main problems with f five, it just became like this race of who could go as f far as possible and kind of like form a defensive line. But and it's always been that. It's always. Been I know that. it's um, basically is that in like warfare you want to get your advantageous position, but I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna I don't say know, that it felt kind of cheap or something something about it just the speed. But yeah, but the problem is, is first off, I really appreciate the Zerg Rush uh, comparison coming from an old StarCraft comp player. But the problem is, is like now it's not any less of a Zerg Rush. If anything, I think that it makes that meta even more plausible because the first person to get to that point and bunker down with a sizable force is going to hold that point because of the outrageous defensive advantage that you have with the ICO. Yeah. So... Like it's still a Zerg rush, and then the the whole like, you know, trying to to make more tactical play with these changes and stuff obviously hasn't worked. If you've played any sort of time after the update, you just look at your map, and all you see is the blueberry army just going from the hab to the point. It's just a tighter blueberry army now than it ever has been. Well, we're in a minor intermission yeah, here, gents. Uh, I'm gonna to have to dip. That, that, that I found. I okay, see it. Yeah, man. I just wanted to share that that I found that a effective way to kind of nudge the player was not jumping over walls and how it affected me in kind of making more deliberate decisions and being a bit slower and you know more thoughtful. I don't know. There's a lot, a lot of approaches I guess they could take. It's just, yeah, I think the idea was to kind of slow the game down, but I don't know. I don't think it's the right approach to nerf gun plays that much. I just don't know why you would necessarily slow the game down. The main issue is that you can have, you can slow the game down as much as you want. But regardless, it's com communication and how it works is completely yeah. based on squad leaders. The commander essentially has no role. To be honest, there's a lot of situations where I don't squad lead a lot, but we just ignore the commander because they don't really often have a clue uh, beside do random stuff. Um, and there has to be a different way for communication for because that's the main issue, honestly. Yeah, yeah. The game can be slow, but the main issue is that the people aren't, for yeah. its purpose, playing the game correctly. Yeah, I guess. They try to nudge the player through like gameplay changes rather than, I don't know, what they should be doing is to communicate 
and like co cooperate. That's the real issue. Real quick, I wanted to chime in. Um, I have a review that's a bit similar to what we're talking about. Uh, I'll read it out real quick, and I'll also link it into the chat so everyone can follow along here. So this is uh, from Eggmar. Uh, he is 2.9 thousand hours. Positive review, and he says this. I've been playing squad for nearly 3,000 hours over the last seven years and never had as much fun as in the last two days. Uh, the, inf the ICO, which some players seem to heavily dislike according to all the review bombing here, makes squad now really stand out among tactical shooter games. Before, it was possible to sprint 100 meters in full gear, take a knee, and pass out accurate headshots over 200 meters within a split second, all while bullets zipping by left and right. Not anymore. The game has been slowed down and for the first time in its history now properly incentiv incentivizes teamwork and coordination even on the squad level. The slower developing firefights feel chaotic and intense now, An engagement in the forest before the ICO 6.0 patch would often be decided by a handful of accurate reaction shots. Someone suddenly starts firing a few meters away, you won't be startled before 5.0, you will just turn, dome him, and move on. Now firefights are a fresh and intense experience with all the suppression and much more difficult aiming. You can still oh, shoot... God... Oh, sorry, what? God, God forbid you're out of position and someone headshots you. Like, sorry. No one, no like, one is sprinting, taking a crouch, and headshotting you at 200 meters while should... they're being shot at. Because you're going again, to get domed immediately. Again, back to my point. I, I do have to go to bed, but uh, back to my point before. Like... This is just, these are just people who were not good at the game and maybe not the best at FPS shooters, and now they're enjoying it again. And it's because everybody sucks. I, I'm yeah, frustrated, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's really unfortunate listening to all these sort of positive reviews saying like, and every single one of them says the exact same thing. Now you can't run and gun. Now you can't go solo wipe teams. Now it, that shit never happened before. Yeah. It didn't. What you was couldn't... happening? What was happening is that you had people who had put three to four thousand hours into a game that has been that has been increasingly getting more and more updates for the past what seven, eight years. People have been dedicating a lot of time to figuring out tactics, map knowledge, gun mechanics. Like what's happening is you're just getting outplayed, and people are were frustrated because they were had 200 hours and they were getting killed by someone who had 4000 hours. So now it's anyway, I those those reviews piss me off. All right, gents, I got to go to bed. I'm fucking pissed. All right. Have a good night everybody. All right, take care, yeah. Kevin. The the guess point that you couldn't sprint 100 meters, take a knee and pass out accurate headshot. That was random that you got a headshot after sprinting completely because you still had to fight stamina you had to put the reticle on the person for that split second and get that headshot so i mean it just seems like a little hyperbole and yeah 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 i mean it's it's the same exact straw man of oh these run and gun comp player cod kitties you know taking out entire squads as a solo player it's a straw man it didn't actually happen uh, with with a very few exception of maybe old Jim holding an angle, taking out an entire squad from 1,200 meters with a machine gun. But that man's just a maniac with that machine gun kit. It just is what it is. So yeah, I just like... want to really quick wrap up this um, th this person's review here. If this adds anything to you guys' thoughts. He continues. You can still shoot super accurate when you stand still. Take a knee and line up the shot, but the same precision is no longer possible out of movement and under suppression. Infantry is slower now, which increases the willingness of players to cooperate within their squads, utilize transportation, and so on. APCs are now actually being used for transportation and fire support, simply because it makes sense, as it should. Overall, the game took a big step away from being a more casual shooter, like many others, towards a closer focus on cooperation, on communication. Folks who are not really interested in that and would prefer to play squad just like any other FPS game will have to move on. And they can. 
There are multiple games around with similar game gunplay, as in Squad before 6.0, but there is only one game like Squad now. Great update. Keep up the good work. Vehicle overhaul next? What other right, games? Um, actually, yeah, uh, so name the, another game. This was a point I wanted to make, actually. Squad actually kind of has a responsibility to be good, because it's one of the only games you can get together with nine people in the same game and play that game. That I can count on my hand how many games you can do that on. Arma and uh, Planet Side. Those are the two other games you can do that in. No other game lets you get together with that many people and play together. I mean, hell, you could get on with 50 other people and play together yeah. with Squad. Yeah, my, my challenge to this would be A... Show me anybody sprinting 100 meters, dropping to a knee, and taking a 200-meter headshot in V5. It it didn't happen. Maybe people got lucky sometimes, but nobody can do it with consistency. Two, watch comp games and tell me that APCs weren't carrying people and weren't being used for infantry support. And three, name another game that plays like squad pre-ICO. Those are my three challenges to that. Understood. I hate to cut it short, everybody, but we're nearing four hours of the podcast. And again, it's nearing that super late night owl hour for myself as well. Um, but we'll transition to, you know, to close the night and we'll continue on Sunday for day four or, you know, day five, as they say, of the podcast. But I want to thank you guys all for being here, especially everybody in the call and everybody in the Twitch chat asking questions and putting forward their perspectives and ideas and this is a very great conversation that we're having and we're very blessed to be able to also have the you know the people from the Chinese community as well and Sunday I'm expecting Sunday to be an even bigger um, audience because it, that one's a planned you know time set time at 1800 UTC and I reached out to multiple people and you know they're all ready I mean, we're gonna get a, a good amount of pro ICO players and some people sent me DMs on discord saying that hey I'm pro ICO I would love to you know they're they're coming on Sunday. So, other than that, um, if you guys have any closing statements, and then we'll go ahead and call it a night, and then you know we'll make the vod available for viewing for day three. I just want to say that it's, uh, I think it's good. Like it just needs tweaks. It just needs some more tweaks. Um, like a lot, a lot more tweaks maybe, but um, it's not a failed like thing at all it just needs to be refined i can agree with that it's what we have to remember squad has always it has not had an update that has not been without its issues major issues the main difference being that if you have they've added mostly new factions or new maps and you could actively avoid those issues and those bugs but this is an update that has fundamental flaws and you fundamentally fundamentally cannot avoid by not playing on maps or a certain faction. And they do get better, but you can't avoid them until they become better. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the ICO has good bones. It, it sets an interesting uh, take on squad's gameplay. Um, it's, it does a lot of good things. Uh, um, I think it's pretty unanimous around here that uh, gunplay is not one of them. So hopefully tweaks come in sooner rather than later um, and we can get back to enjoying the game like we used to because, you know, a lot of this stuff right now breeds a lot of frustration. So hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully it's something that they can remedy and uh, hopefully we don't have to wait six months. <laughs> That's my concern too, is if you look at how long some of the changes take it. Um, I hope that it is going to be sooner than later too. Yeah. Um, my closing, I would just like to reiterate kind of what other people have said and what I've said in the past is, you know, not everything about the ISO ICO is bad. Not everything about V6 is doom and gloom. There are some things that I like the concept of, um, namely, I like the concept of suppression and how it makes the MG more like what an MG should be doing. Um, I, I'm okay with the slower infantry movement speed to an extent. I'm okay with the vaulting changes. I'm glad that they slowed QE down. Um, 
but everything was so over the line of where it should have been that all together it just it makes a horrible gameplay experience and that's where i sit awesome thanks very much everybody and again thank you all for joining us for day three of the squad podcast the testimony series again my name is socrates your host and everybody here hope you all have a great day a great night wherever you're at around the world. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, and enjoy Squad. And please, reinstall Squad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all have a good one. Take care.